Hey everyone, this is Tony, Dungeon Master for D&D Raw, and today we will be going over one of our NPC stories. Now next week, we'll be Sharpen Quill, Episode 10. Join us now for the NPC story on Favian Nathandom. My lord, I heard your son has recently been pronounced the new head of the Nathandom household. That's true. Now, if you'd please, you must be very proud, my lord. I was unaware you were giving up the position to your son, but given recent achievements, it's clear that he's ready for leave. What do you want, Umrug? Not to add insult to injury, but the contracts and the note about Darwin's arrest are missing. I've lost the power I've sought for so long. How could I not have foreseen this is what Darwin would do? With the royal family on Darwin's side, his position secure. I'm just a member of my household now, just like when my uncle was in power. I suppose I cannot blame Darwin for his play for power. He became royal cleric at my insistence. Well, it makes sense that he would make a play for more. He was able to get you out of the spotlight without harming the family name, securing his interests, keeping you in current standing among the nobility. Did you know, Umrag, that when my uncle Tarfon was in power, we were not the religious family that we are today? The promotion of the temples and clerics was something that I pushed our family towards, due to my son's innate abilities. I thought that was smart, considering your rumors that your family always had a history of dealings and pushed you higher and higher positions. Shady dealings. You mean your grandfather's death was gossiped about, not being an accident since it led to Tarfon's rule as head of the household. Yes, and Tarfon allowed some semblance of our want to show faithfulness but stopped any sort of promotion beyond the walls of our wing in the palace. He claimed the reigns had no interest in the divine other than what the divine could do for this empire. With every new idea I had that could strengthen our family's position, I was shut down again and again. Tarfon wanted none of it. Enjoyed bossing us around to just sitting on the family's position. I couldn't stand for it. Once Darwin went to the Rose and Gold Temple to study, I secretly made pushes with his royal highness for the benefits of having a royal cleric straight from a noble family. Darwin could then work with the royal wizard and craft potions of longevity and be on hand to heal those from injury and due to his upbringing would already be set for life in court. So that's where his highness got the idea. I don't recall Tarfin being very pleased when he found out. Tarfon allowed his royal highness to begin crafting the position for Darwin, but I was reprimanded behind the scenes. Tarfon told me to never stick my nose in royal business like this again or I would seriously regret it. However, as you know my plans were already in motion. By this point it just meant I needed to cow to my uncle and I apologized for trying to set myself above my place in the Nathandom house. His attention was on me, but it didn't matter anymore because before ever approaching King, we had our contacts, and you could help push our agenda. Aye, you brought me in to do the deals you couldn't attend to yourself. That's right, start funding money to various archivists in order to find treasures to fill the Nathandom household and bring in artifacts from the early days of the Remmer Empire. Glory to the reigns. I helped fund the Rose and Gold so they can continue to train students, while of course keeping a constant eye on my son. And you gave me the coin necessary to fund our inventors and helped bump me up to my current position. I gathered resources and information and gave it back to you in exchange. And all this was in motion so that by the time Tarfin found out you had been meeting with the king, everything was in place. In a sense, by this point, we had formed our own group, our network, if you will. Procurers, spies, and agents thanks to our mutual benefactor. And then we made sure to get help that Tarfon wouldn't expect. Extra planer. I don't think you ever told me of how that last meeting with your uncle went specifically. At the time, I was worried about how many details need to be known by who and how many people. It doesn't really matter now. You recall I claimed to be away from Orenthal on a so-called vacation, where I gathered the last bit of leverage we needed to convince my uncle to step down. And thanks to this additional aid, I had the evidence I needed and I set up the meeting with my uncle and to give him a very easy choice. We met in a secured room in my home in Aspenbrook, away from the prying eyes of Orenthal, and set before him what I learned. Dear Uncle Tarfon, your reputation would be ruined. 
You'd be imprisoned and executed. With all these letters signed in your hand to former members of the Shadow Wolves who have turned assassin, low-ranking members of other households, even a few scheduled meetings with important figures from the Nephany and Solana, this all looks like you are trying to remove the royal family from power. It looks like you are trying to stage a coup and several plans in place in order to accomplish this. Even your father, my grandfather, saw that this was in the works, according to this information here. And here is the order you gave to have him killed and make sure it looked like an accident. You snivering little coward, you will never convince the king. I don't need to convince the king. I just need to convince the people. If enough of this spreads and is circulated, it doesn't matter what the king thinks because no one will trust you again. The nobility will distance themselves from you, and your life will be turned upside down with every little thing you do scrutinized for any possible nefarious intent. I would never allow you to- There are things in play that will set this in motion if I don't leave here tonight. Do not threaten me, Uncle Tarfon, because I hold all the tiles here. I have been trying to promote our family to a higher position. This would ruin our family! It would drag us down should all of this be released. You would be destroyed, and the Nathandom name would be dragged down along with it. However, I am willing to allow you and your wife to live your lives in peace away from all this, and not have a single whisper of evidence leave this room on one condition. You set up a meeting with the king tomorrow, and announce you are stepping down as head of the household and promoting me to be the new leader of the Nathandoms. I will graciously accept the position with humility, and we can say that you are growing old and tired of life in court and feel I am ready to step in. That's it. All I have to do is hand over all my power to you. I will lead our family to prosperity as a faithful defender of the gods. All I need is for you to sign this agreement here. As you can see, I've already signed my part of the agreement to let you leave Orenthal so long as you never interfere in the politics of the Vimmer Empire again. What kind of parchment is this? Specially made so that it could withstand the test of time. Would have wanted to get too close to a fireplace and be destroyed. And, and agree to give power over the Nathanum household to Favian and will never interfere or bring up this meeting so long as the Sainé wishes to gain the benefits of the protection of this contract. By going against any of the requirements of said contract, the Sainé gives up any protection that it provides. What's all this about protection? It ensures that we are both being held to our ends of the agreement here. Now what would you prefer? Your life in ruin? with you and your wife constantly looked upon with disgust, possibly even in chains, or a life of comfort and peace. It was not hard to convince Tarfin, but what he didn't know was the full magical nature of the contract. He didn't understand the powers of extraplanar contracts, but he would soon. With his signature, he was bound. The position of head of household was mine. A few months later, news reached the court of a terrible fire that consumed his home out near North Pass. I remember. It was a shame he was staying so close to the edge of the wildlands. A dangerous area out there. But now what though? I still hold my position, but you're out of power. There's not much you can do here anymore. You're right. I'm out and Darwin is in. I'm no longer in the view of the court and I can go where I please with little scrutiny. Perhaps this can still be used to our advantage. I still have many contacts I can call upon. Those contracts, though gone, still currently hold their authority. I cannot do as much for the Nathandoms in Orenthal anymore. That task will have to be left to Darwin. For now, maybe I'll take a bit of a vacation. That White Cliff boy did mention the ruins in Veripol, which could be an interesting excursion. Or perhaps I can go back to my family home in Aspenbrook. I may be out of power here, Umrug, but that does not mean I am out of the picture. Thank you for this talk. It was a nice trip down memory lane, and it seems I have plans still to make. Thank you all for listening to our NPC stories. I really do enjoy doing this as a bit of world building outside of the actual campaign itself. And let me know if you enjoy this as well. Feel free to message us on Twitter at Rules is Written, or you can email me directly at dm at dndraw.com. You can also subscribe and leave us a comment wherever podcasts are found. And please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash dndraw. And I hope to see you next time in the world of Ostia.